Cat's software library for modeling and simulation of solar desalination systems. www.redslibrary.com Hi everybody, Fosu Mahmoud Chalo with you. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, the modeling of uh, natural draft uh, with cooling towers. What is the main concept? Uh, how can we run our model? Uh, let's see what we can do about that. First of all, the concept uh, about the cooling towers is that it's a structure whose function is to uh, cool a large, large amount of water through a certain temperature range by exposing the water to the ambient air in a combined evaporation and convection heat transfer processes. Uh, the structure is so designed that the warm water falls from uh, the top of the bottom, uh, from the top to the bottom uh, in thin uh, curtains or droplets while the air enters from uh, the bottoms and flows to the top uh, vertically for counter flow uh, cooling or from the side uh, horizontal flow, um, the example of cross flow cooling. Uh, probably designed cooling towers ensure that uh, a relatively large water surface is exposed to, uh, to the air. This surface is produced by uh, water uh, dropping uh, or splashing through uh, a fill or backing, usually uh, constructed uh, from wood. Um, the cooling towers are generally classified into main groups uh, natural draft that we are going to talk about today and mechanical draft which we can use uh, fans, larger fans or something like this. Uh, natural draft uh, towers uh, uh, depend on ambient conditions uh, in order to produce cooling flow uh, uh, and um, are further uh, subdivided the atmospheric tower in which Prevailing winds uh, provide all uh, ventilation uh, and the straight wall chimney type, which is uh, rapidly become uh, obsolete. Uh, the third one is uh, the hyperbolic wall tower. As you can see, for mechanical depth towers, uh, uh, it's created their own air movement by means of motor driven fans using fans, uh, something like this. Uh, as you can see here, this is uh, into uh, mechanical draft cooling towers. There is a fan here. In order to uh, um, its operation is to make some kind of suction to the air, forced air suction, uh, counter flow of the water uh, uh, falling. And as you can see here, this is natural draft cooling tower. As you can see, we have here this is the This is the airlet air inlet uh, section and uh, this is the cooling folds this, this is the fields and this is the water cooling water that I'm going to 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 uh, uh, make it cooler something like this okay natural draft uh, uh, is a famous device for huge amount of uh, of food we have to to put in our mind uh, the drift, the evaporation losses, uh, uh, a blow down, and make up. This these parameters is, is are quite interesting while ad ad addressing uh, cooling tower. This is, this is schematic, not the schematic of the cooling tower. It's around 100 over 100 plus in height. Uh, the diameter is around 50, 60s. There's a top diameter and the bottom uh, diameter. It's around 100, 100 plus. Okay. Uh, the schematic uh, of uh, the cooling towers. As you can see here, this is a warm water inlet. There's another kind. Uh, water distribution over the field. Uh, and the air. Uh, is going from uh, bottom up to uh, going through up to the high, to the throat. This is the throat diameter here. It's around 60s, 50s in meters, and so on. Okay, how can we run our model? Our model is, is completely different because we are going to it's a design model. We are going to discover design aspects. What is the tower height? What is the diameters? Throat diameters, base diameter, 
uh, what is the energy streams, uh, what is the outlet conditions. Uh, we, we are going to uh, specify or assign the inlet condition of the air uh, inlet, cooling air inlet, and uh, hot water inlet. Uh, let's go and see how can we run our model. Okay, we can open our MATLAB and run our model. Okay, our model should be appear like this. Don't forget to uh, check uh, this button. Okay. Now, first of all, we have to assign some inputs. Let's go and see. First of all, we have to, uh, as you can see here, this is the inlet air temperature. Uh, um, suppose I'm going to assign it at uh, uh, 25 degrees Celsius. And the inlet uh, water temperature, this is the hot water temperature that I am going to reduce its temperature by evaporation. Suppose it's around um, 35. Okay, and we can assign some design aspects like uh, pressure losses, mass flow rate. I'm going for uh, mass flow rate, suppose it's uh, uh, 10 meter cube per hour. You can assign what you would like. I'm satisfied with this condition. Uh, height of the fill, uh, we have to assign some uh, coefficients. Uh, this coefficient, this is height from the fill. Uh, to the tower top coefficient, this is a percentage, and this is height from base bottom to the top tower coefficient. You can I will keep these parameters. You can change uh, these parameters and you can discover the effect on on the, on the process. For performance, a cooling tower efficiency. I'm going for uh, suppose it's 60, uh, 60 per, uh, percent of effectiveness or efficiency. And draft uh, loss coefficient, you can change a draft with loss coefficient uh, and so on. Let's go and see inside what we can uh, click over it. Let's hit run. Okay. Uh, suppose we are going to, yes. As you can see here, we have here a uh, uh, natural draft above uh, the fill. This is natural draft. This is uh, H is natural draft above the field to the top, and this is uh, H is the total height, total height of uh, of the of the cooling tower, and and this is diameter, diameter of uh, of the top, throat diameter, and this is a base diameter, uh, and so on. You can collect your data by changing your parameter if you would like. This is uh, our data, the base diameter, fill diameter, and so on. You can change your uh, conditions here dynamically if you would like. Suppose I'm going for uh, 40 degrees Celsius and uh, 75.5, okay. You can change and hit run again, and you can see, collect your data from here. And you can go dynamically, uh, that's okay. Uh, a natural depth above the fill, uh, HH, it's around 112 meters. Outlet water temperature, it's dropped from uh, 40 down to 32. Outlet enthalpy of the water, inlet water enthalpy. Uh, wood bulb temperature is around uh, 27, very good. Out air, air temperature is around uh, 35. Uh, okay. Air humidity, inlet air humidity, outlet air humidity. This is the air volume. Okay, meter cube per, per kilogram. The cooling tower approach, and this is the range. Okay, and Sure, you can define a cooling tower range and uh, and approach by this by this uh, figure. As this is the range approach, the difference between wood pulp and uh, cooling water outlet, and the ranges from uh, the difference between cooling uh, water outlet and hot uh, water inlet temperature. This is the range. Uh, yes, uh, suppose I, yes, we can discover many, many of. Uh, suppose I'm going to. This is the air mass flow rate, uh, makeup water flow rate. Uh, 
كنت نسيت evaporative losses uh, flow velocity uh, drift losses windage losses evaporative losses and blow down losses uh, this is total losses in flow rate uh, number of cycles capital costs operating costs and we can here uh, we can also calculate um, heat loss by water uh, kilojoule per hour and we can heat gain by by the air okay let's go and uh, we can check uh, also some design uh, aspects as you can see here uh, okay uh, this is base diameter this base diameter is 102 meters fill diameter okay this is fill diameter da and the throat diameter is around 153 i think i think uh, number in the range of uh, top tower diameter 63 total height this is the total height from bottom uh, to the top of uh, of the tower is around 126 uh, fill height okay. this is fill height h h no h note it's around 14 meters that's quite good uh, height um, from the fill top fill uh, to the throat h h t it's around 93 and shell thickness the thickness of the shell of, of the wall of uh, of the tower is around 16 centimeters okay we can change some uh, inputs dynamically i'm going for uh, okay let's go and change some inputs and uh, we can realize some uh, changing some changes if we go here to go here and Okay, let's hit run and change, for example, uh, the efficiency of the effectiveness. I'm going to change the effectiveness down to uh, 40%, for example. Okay, okay. Okay, reducing the efficiency will cause uh, and, uh, a, a massive increase in dimensions of, uh, of the cooling tower. Uh, most efficient tower means uh, reasonable design aspects okay this is uh, 40 40 percent as you can see here changing uh, uh, the diameters and let's stop let's discover some uh, the outputs okay uh, let's see here this base diameter as you can see here changing the efficiency would increase the base diameter and the fill diameter the same the same uh, sort of diameter increasing because there is um, let's see some uh, some total height this total height okay uh, outlet water temperature increasing cooling water range decreasing heat loss heat loss and we have here heat gain uh, air mass flow rate you can this uh, make water losses uh, evaporation losses and uh, windage uh, some kind of outlet water in salby here as you can see uh, inlet water in salby with bulb temperature outlet air temperature uh, and so on humidity and so on so you can address many many parameters if you are going to change temperature ranges or uh, uh, efficiency of the tower uh, and so on you can uh, discover what is the best uh, uh, best effect of the, the efficiency or the operating conditions on the design limits you can optimize your uh, outputs it's easy by uh, easy handling by simulink it's easy for you to uh, optimize your design aspects uh, okay finally uh, don't forget to download the, uh, our power cycles with the smooth dissolution plant especially with geothermal energy 
can discover our videos about this one uh, would like to thank you for your watching uh, thank you don't don't forget to like share subscribe uh, thank you very much